Welcome back guys to the latest installment of Mr. Hutton's Science. Uh, videos to help you with your AQA GCC chemistry course. Thank you to those guys that have left me feedback so far. Um, some of you have said I need to be a little bit louder. So um, I'm trialling out a new microphone today and hopefully that will help with that problem. Uh, others have said that I sound a little bit depressed. Um, so, well, that's just the sound of my voice, I'm afraid, but I will try and be a little bit more chirpy for you uh, to try and make the uh, the videos a little bit more exciting, um, but uh, that's, well, we'll see how we go with that. I can't promise anything. So, um, today's video, as you can see, is on moles. Um, this is uh, an integral part for any chemistry course, so some of you might be in year eight, year nine, um, doing other exam boards, and this video will still still be appropriate for those as well. So before we start, uh, make sure your mobile phones are switched off so there's no distractions. Uh, you've been to the toilet, you've got yourself a drink, and uh, a pen and pencil and some paper so that you can write a few things down. Right, so what is a mole? Well, quite simply, a mole is just a quantity. Simply put, it's a way of representing a number by uh, using a different term. But much like we use a kilogram to represent a thousand grams, a meter to represent a hundred centimeters, a millennium for a thousand years, a dozen is twelve, a hat trick is three, a brace is two. Okay, so a mole is just another way of representing a number. And the number that it represents is, so it's 6.02 times 10 to the 23. And that is a huge, huge number. Um, and we use it just to represent the number of atoms, ions, particles, molecules that we might have. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms is known as a mole. It's also known as Avogadro's constant. Now it's called a constant because it stays the same. It is always 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Much like one kilogram is always a thousand grams and a millennium is always a thousand years, a mole is always 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms, particles, molecules or ions. So instead of saying 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms of carbon, which is a bit of a mouthful, we can instead just say that we have one mole of carbon. So the periodic table tells us a lot about moles. The periodic table is, is an essential part for any kind of molar calculation. And the relationship between the table and moles um, we're going to look at just now in the next next few moments. So the mass number, the relative atomic mass, the AR, is equal to the mass of one mole of the element. So the mass number on the periodic table, on this particular example, is the top number. So um, the bigger number. If you've got different periodic tables, sometimes you'll see that the bigger number is on the bottom and the proton number is on the top. But whichever periodic table you've got, the bigger number for each of the elements is always the mass number. And we're gonna run through a few examples here um, to show you the relationship between moles and the periodic table. So the first example, one mole of carbon has a mass of 12 grams. So you can see from our, our highlighted square there, carbon, the relative atomic mass of carbon is 12. And so one mole of carbon has a mass of 12 grams. The next example, sulfur. The relative atomic mass of sulfur is 32. So one mole of sulfur has a mass of 32 grams. Now the next one, nitrogen. The relative atomic mass of nitrogen, as you can see from the table, is 14. And this time we're looking at two moles of nitrogen. And you can see that it says it has a mass of 28 grams. So all we've done here is we've taken the 14 multiplied it by 2 to give us 28 grams. The third example, fluorine. So we've, we're onto 3 moles now. 
Uh, so the relative atomic mass of fluorine is 19. 3 times 19 is 57 grams. Then we're back to carbon here. We've just turned it round slightly. So instead of starting with moles, we're starting with the grams. And we're saying 36 grams of carbon is 3 moles of carbon. So if 1 mole is 12 grams, and we've got 36 grams, 36 divided by 12 gives us 3 moles. So you're going to have a chance now to do some calculations yourselves. So here we're going to look at calculating moles of elements. And you see there's eight questions there. Some of them you need to calculate one mole, others two, and some three. Um, at the bottom there, number eight, it's asking you to calculate the mass of one mole of chlorine. Okay, um, So that's chlorine molecules. You can see it says Cl2. So you're going to have to think carefully about what you might do on that one. So just another phrase to bring in here is molar mass. Sometimes you'll hear things referred to to molar mass. So the mass of one mole is known as the molar mass. So for example, we've just looked at carbon. So the molar mass of carbon is 12 grams. You've got the chance now to do some of these. So pause the video uh, and attempt these questions. Then when you're ready, unpause it to reveal the answers. Okay, here are the answers to those questions. Uh, mark your work. If you've got any um, errors or mistakes or you're a bit unsure, um, then do get in contact with your teachers or with myself, uh, especially if I've made any errors there. Do let me know. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at is how we can work out the moles of compounds. So compounds, it's much the same technique, okay, but instead of looking at relative atomic mass, we're looking at relative formula mass, MR. So whenever we're talking about elements, we'll talk about relative atomic mass. Whenever we talk about compounds, we'll talk about relative formula mass. And the same principle applies. So the relative formula mass of a compound is equal to the mass of one mole of, of the compound. So here, our example, H2O. So one mole of water has a mass of 18 grams. All we've done here is we've looked at the periodic table and hydrogen has a relative atomic mass of one. There are two hydrogens in this molecule, so that gives us two. And one oxygen. Oxygen has a relative atomic mass of 16. So two plus 16 is 18. Okay, the next example is a little bit harder. So we've got calcium hydroxide. Um, again, we're looking at the periodic table Calcium, the relative atomic mass is 40. And then we've got this OH in brackets with a 2 outside. So what that means is everything in the brackets gets multiplied by 2. So that's 2 lots of oxygen and 2 lots of hydrogen. So if we've got 40 for calcium, 16 times 2 for oxygen, and 1 times 2 for hydrogen, that gives us a mass of 74 grams. Our next example is magnesium oxide, but this time we're looking at two moles of magnesium oxide. So magnesium is 24, oxygen is 16, which gives us 40. And because we've got two moles, we multiply it by two and we're left with 80 grams. Finally, the next example, uh, hydrogen sulfate, uh, hydrochloric acid. And this time we're looking at three moles of hydrogen sulfate and the mass is 294 grams. So hydrogen has a mass of 1, so 1 times 2. Sulfur has a mass of 32. Oxygen has a mass of 16, so that's 16 times 4. And then if you times that all by 3, you'll get 294 grams. Okay, once again, you're going to have a chance to do some of these calculations now. So you're going to be looking at some compounds and calculating the mass of one mole or two moles or three moles of the various different compounds. <clears throat> so to begin with, you're just doing one mole, which isn't too difficult. Um, and then you've got to do two moles. But down the bottom, you can see that instead of me giving you the formulae, I've actually just given you the chemical name. 
and you need to be able to work out what the formally may be and um, and then work out what the relative formula mass would be from the formula. For something like methane, you should be well aware of that by now. Calcium carbonate, you should be aware of. Glucose from your biology, again, you should should be able to say what that is. Um, just reel the, those three off the, t the end of your tongue. Aluminium oxide, fair enough, you probably may not know what the formula is for that, but you can certainly go away and look that, that, look that one up uh, in order to help you with that question. So again, if you pause the video now, attempt these questions, and then unpause when you're ready to reveal the answers. Okay, the answers are there. Um, hopefully I've calculated all those correctly. If you do spot any mistakes, uh, then do please let me know. Um, otherwise, mark your work. If you find that you're, you're getting a lot of these wrong, or you're unsure why you're getting them wrong, then um, get in touch with your teachers or myself um, to try and help you with that. Alright, well, we're going on now to look at the relationship between moles, the relative formula mass, and mass. You may have noticed as we've been going through that there is a relationship between the three things, and you may have actually worked it out already. On this slide here, we've got a picture of carbon, and also we've got the carbon um, element symbol there. And you can see this is an example of where the the mass number is actually on the bottom, and the proton number is on the top of the the element symbol. Um, but remember, the mass number is always the larger number. So even if you are looking at a periodic table where it is the other way around, as long as you're using the larger number as the mass number, then you won't have any problems. So the statement here says, the mass of one mole of carbon is 12 grams, the molar mass. If I have 72 grams, the mass of carbon, how many moles of carbon do I have? So you can see there, within that, there are there's some different um, symbols. So we've got the capital M for molar mass, the lowercase m for mass, and a lowercase n for moles. So see if you can work out what the answer to that might be. Pause the video if you need to. Um, I'll reveal that in a moment. Six moles. So hopefully you've worked out that it is six moles. Okay, so what you should have done is 72 divided by 12, okay, to give you six. So based on that, if you have got the answer correct, or if you can see that answer now, see if you can develop an equation that links the moles the mass and the molar mass, and make moles the subject of your equation. So what I mean by that is, you should have an equation that says moles equals, and then you should be able to say what it equals. Okay, hopefully you've come up with the same equation. So hopefully you've come up with moles equals mass over molar mass. Okay, you're going to use this equation now to uh, to do some calculations and see if you can work out some answers um, using the moles, the mass, and the molar mass. And in a couple of these, you'll need to rearrange the equation, okay, um, in order to help you answer the question. If you're unsure about rearranging equations, then go away and look that up now before you attempt this. Um, but if you're okay with that and you think you're you're up to rearranging equations, then do by all means have a go at the questions below. If you pause the video now, attempt the questions, and then unpause when you're ready to reveal the answers. Okay, the answers are there on the side. Uh, hopefully you've, you've got all of these right. If you haven't, then just correct your work. Um, if you're unsure where you've gone wrong, then again, do get in touch with your teachers or myself um, and we'll hopefully be able to help you out. So that brings us to the end of today's um, video. Okay, Please, if you haven't already, subscribe. So click that subscribe button. Uh, we're at about 95 subscribers now. We'll try and get to 100. Okay, and then push on from there to 200, 300, 400 and even more. Okay. Do look out for more videos, so when you subscribe, make sure you get the notifications because there'll be more videos coming. Um, if you want a video on something in particular, again, then do let me know and I'll do my best to try and put something together.
but bear in mind um, I am new to this so the video quality is still still a little bit um, well it's still got work to do let's say and uh, if you have any ideas about things I could do then do do please drop me a note at the bottom of the screen um, but most of all hit that subscribe button share it with your friends get them subscribing too and I'll see you next time